small to see doesn't mean they aren't harmful. If you take in a big breath of coal dust, some of it, some of those particles, particularly the larger ones, will lodge in your mouth and nose and throat, in your upper airways. And if you have sort of asthma or pre-existing lung disease, that can be quite irritating and problematic. Um, but fortunately, in the upper airway, there's little hairs called cilia that beat upwards and try to clear out the muck from your lungs and get it up to your throat, where it forms spit that you can get rid of or swallow. But it's the smaller coal particles that are more dangerous. They can go deep into the lung, past the level where the hairs exist, down where they get stuck and irritate the cells down there. They can cause inflammation, which again, uh, worsens existing lung disease like asthma, COPD, emphysema. They can cause scarring, and there's a condition called coal worker's lung you might have heard of, where people have long exposure, their lungs can scar up and it becomes difficult to breathe, and that kind of change is irreversible. And these particles can also cause lung cancer in some instances. And the smallest particles of all can travel through the walls of the lung into the bloodstream and go around the body. And just as they're irritating to the lung, they're also irritating to the blood vessels in your body and can cause constrictions that reduce blood supply to certain parts of your body. If that happens in your heart, it can cause heart attacks. And if it happens in your brain, it can cause strokes. So coal dust, pollution from coal dust can cause all of those things. Uh, coal is also dangerous, can be dangerous because it contains some toxic heavy metals like lead, cadmium, arsenic and mercury. Mercury is particularly dangerous to the nervous system and even to the developing nervous systems of unborn babies in low concentrations. Um, coal also often contains chemicals called BTEX chemicals that you might have heard of that can cause cancers at low concentrations. And then the combustion of coal in power stations often produces a lot of airborne sulfur dioxide, which is another toxin that's very irritating to this respiratory system and it's particularly dangerous for very young or very old people that can worsen lung disease and cause presentations to hospital. So those are the sort of immediate effects of how coal on the body. Uh, but coal has another uh, sort of broader health impact by um, contributing to climate change. Coal is coal burning is Australia's single largest contributor to greenhouse gases. The more coal we burn, the more carbon dioxide goes up in the air, the more sunlight is trapped in the earth, and the warmer the world gets. Over the past hundred years, our world has warmed up by an average of 0.85 degrees, almost one degree Celsius. And with that change, we're seeing more frequent and severe heat waves and bushfires in Australia, which can be very dangerous for health. In periods of extreme heat, people can become more dehydrated, which puts strain on their heart and their kidneys, making them more likely to get sick and need to go to hospital. For example, in 2009 in Melbourne, there was a heat wave over a three day period of temperatures above 43 degrees that resulted in 300 excess deaths, more than you would normally expect for that time of year. And I, I, I don't think you need to be a doctor to sort of appreciate the threat that bushfires can pose for health. Around the world as well, uh, things are even more dire in terms of the health effects of climate change with increased sort of extreme weather events, cyclones, floods that spread infectious diseases, mixed with droughts and famines and crop failures. So I've talked a bit about the immediate effects of coal on the health of so your lungs, your heart, your brain, as well as the effects on our climate and our society more broadly. And the reason I want to be able to tell you these things as a doctor, and the reason I still come here to do talks like this is because as a doctor, I don't just want to treat people when they come to hospital when they're sick. I want to stop them from getting sick in the first place. And that's why these issues around pollution and climate change are concerns for the World Health Organization and the Australian Medical Association and Healthy Futures as well. I, um, I wanted to that Hazelwood itself was causing 18 deaths every year around Gippsland. And if you count all the deaths in Gippsland, that means that sort of one in every hundred of those deaths is caused by Hazelwood, and that's just one of the power stations. And then climate change more broadly is estimated to cause, again, a quarter of a million deaths every year after 2030, as estimated by the World Health Organization. And the last statistic I wanted to leave you with was, because we mentioned nuclear power earlier as a uh, dangerous form of energy. People have done studies into how much uh, how many deaths different forms of energy cause for each amount of electricity they produce. And they've calculated that coal-fired power is over 1,800 times more deadly per unit of electricity than nuclear. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks very much. I look forward to the panel.
records and, and numbers there. Our next speaker is Lee Eubank, and I do like the jumper he's wearing, but that's something we can all make past judgment on. Um, Lee is from Yester Renewables, which is Friends of the Earth's campaign for 100% renewable energy. Yester Renewables empowers communities to win local campaigns that accelerate transition to renewable energy. They work with communities, with workers, unions, businesses, and other stakeholders to build a strong